Employees and managers. What was idiot proof before an employee proved otherwise? I worked at a breakfast place with a large maple syrup warmer in the back that we'd use to fill the small cups of syrup for customers. These warmers are refilled periodically from gallon jugs. One server went to refill it one day, but there was only enough room for about half a gallon. She just kept pouring. The manager and I just watched, dumbfounded. For several seconds, as she continued filling the warmer with the syrup, just cascading down the sides, before the manager managed to shout, What the heck are you doing? Her response, it just kept coming out. So gravity is what she didn't understand. So far, this is my favourite story. I work in insurance and I'm a risk engineer who specialises in multinational accounts. I've seen the strangest things while visiting facilities and have argued with people who insist that oils don't burn because NFPA doesn't list them as flammable liquids or that it's normal to throw acetone on a shrink wrap machine. The funniest, however, was a food plant that used polystyrene insulated panels in the large freezers and insisted they didn't need to repair large holes in their walls because fires could never get into the walls, and how silly I was to say it was a possibility. Well, some welders found a way to put some fire in those walls, and the plant burned down. Now, as the welding company was completely liable for this loss, they immediately went bankrupt. Under a new name, the same welders won the contract to assist in the rebuild. Now, Despite my recommendation to use non-combustible insulated wall panels, or at least approved panels with polyurethane insulation, the company decided to go with the exact panel they had before. And during the reconstruction period, the same welders caught the fricking wall on fire again and burned down half of the stupid plant after it was almost reconstructed. Suffice to say, we lost them as a client. We have a saying in my industry, Never underestimate the creativity of idiots. It's actually so true, isn't it? You cannot underestimate the power of an idiot. Because in most circumstances, an idiot will always surprise you with their ability to actually kind of do things in a more clever, different approach. If you see what I mean. Bearing in mind, that's only some idiots, okay? Others are just genuinely idiots. I was an assistant manager at a small family-owned business. The hiring manager would hire kids straight out of high school to work in the call center. One girl in particular stood out because she was just plain stupid. Once, she called me in a panic because somehow the screen she was in changed all of a sudden into her desktop screen. Turns out she minimized her program screen. I showed her exactly what she pressed and she seemed amazed by the minimize button. She also once called me in a panic because her word program didn't look quite right. Turns out she was using Notepad instead of Word. This girl had on her resume that she was proficient in utilising Microsoft Office programmes and was knowledgeable in the use of computers. She only lasted two months. Oh, bore off, guys. Give her a break. Come on, we all lie on our CVs, right? I basically act like I created slash invented Microsoft. Like, I genuinely act like I invented Microsoft. I'm like, of course I know how to use it. I've been using it since I came out the womb. Jeez, but it's true. We do all lie on our CVs. Maybe a bit too much. Dig a trench. Putting drainage pipe in. Full in trench. A guy I work with just dug a trench and then filled it back in. Putting the pipe in the trench is Bill's job. He's sick today. Had a guy making fried onions. Dropped his tongs in the deep fryer and reached in to pull them out. In his defense, he came up with the tongs and crispy skin. To be fair, It's really easy to get distracted when playing with super hot oil and forget it's super hot oil. Your instinct says to just grab it. I've come close to doing this a few times when working with fryers, but luckily I stopped myself before it happened. Poor dude, hey? Frying onions, making them crispy? Come out with crispy fingers. Uh Uh-oh. As manager of a gas station, we did not get the most intelligent people applying 75% of the time. We did get the occasional underachieving but very smart person but that was definitely not the majority. Because of that, almost everything in the store is idiot-proof, with backups in place to keep the overachieving morons safe from themselves. This actually happened at a store in my district, but not at my store. At the time, we were selling green dot prepaid credit cards. They're credit cards that you load money on for people who don't have credit cards, or for people who want a more anonymous way to make purchases. For the month prior to this incident, people would call the stores saying they were in a green dot rep. 
and it appears that our machine isn't working, and they needed the cashier to check to see if the problem had been resolved. In order to do this, they told the cashier to activate a reload card, a card that people bought once they had the physical card already, for a certain amount, up to $500, and then give them the number of the card. At every step in the process, the cashier had to confirm on the machine that activates the card that the person buying the card was physically in the store and that they had collected the money from the person. So essentially, these people were conning cashiers into giving them money. Every employee from the regional manager down had been warned every single day for a month to just hang up on these people. The district manager had to go to every single store and speak to every employee personally about this. So you would think that after an entire month of warning, that every employee would have understood that this was a scam and to just hang up. Apparently, this one cashier missed the 187 memos, forgot the manager and district manager's warnings, and didn't read the warning on the machine as she's selecting yes to confirm. Because this girl did not just activate one card and give them the number, she did it until she ran out of cards to activate. The people on the other end of the phone got over $10,000 from this girl and could have gotten more if she hadn't run out of activation cards. Oh no, there really is nothing worse than doing something wrong at work. It makes you feel like such an idiot. And this girl gave away 10 grand. What a douche. (sighs) Joking, no, that's really nasty. But we all make mistakes, but you are just an absolute flid, mate. We actually had to put a sign on the microwave that read, Do not put cast iron skillets in microwave. The woman who made this sign necessary said, What? It's not like tinfoil or nothing. When asked what the actual frick she was thinking, Don't put metal in the science oven, Rosalind. How to turn off a fryer. There's a big dial at the end that says off. There's a huge red lever that reads drain. For the love of Sami Zayn, do not pull the red lever to turn off said fryer. I've never been more scared in my life. Turning around, witnessing a cook almost searing his skin away with 350 degree Fahrenheit oil after I asked him to turn off the fryer. It didn't even faze him after I said, do you realise what you were about to do? Needless to say, he doesn't work for me anymore. I have a fast food restaurant and everything is precisely calculated. You want to make soup? Take one bag of soup, put in small container, put container in microwave. Press the soup button. Takes one minute to prepare and 11 minutes in the microwave. Simple, right? Nope. She insists that putting it in the big container and stirring it every three minutes for 20 minutes till it's lava hot and too thick, then adding one cup of water and stirring for another five minutes is the way to go. Trust the researcher whose job was to develop the most efficient method. I hired a young woman to watch my kids for a few hours a day and do some light house cleaning. We also have a little dog. On her first day, I got a call that someone had found my dog running around. No big deal. I told her to make sure the dog doesn't get out. On the second day, another call. The dog got out again. When talking to her the second time, she seemed confused as to why the dog couldn't go wherever it pleased. I had to fire her the next week for an altogether different reason. But she seemed to struggle with simple keeping a door shut, which I thought was idiot-proof. Well, I mean, if dogs could go wherever they please, they'd be running all around the street, you doofbag. I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with that because I love dogs, but think a little, yeah? Co-worker had cold hands, so he put his gloves in the microwave for 30 seconds, pushed three minutes instead, then ran into the bathroom. Microwave and gloves were ruined. Break room smelled bad for a week. I can just imagine this guy thinking he's clever as frick microwaving his gloves to keep his hands warmer. I mean, to be fair, I thought that was quite a good idea initially. But then he pressed three minutes and it all went downhill from there. But I mean, it is kind of smart when you think about it. Or am I being an idiot now? Had a co-worker, receptionist at the time, pour water into our office's paper shredder because it wasn't shredding well. I thought it needed to be lubricated. She's now one of our purchasers and is responsible for thousands upon thousands of dollars of food purchases every day. Yeah, she's not the sharpest bulb in the shed. Not the sharpest bulb in the shed. She just hasn't been broken yet. What's the hardest way to create a Word document with an embedded spreadsheet? A co-worker opened Word typed the text, paragraphed all the way to the bottom and put in the space for the signature. Then she opened Excel, 
made the spreadsheet. Then she printed both, glued the spreadsheet between the texts, and photocopied it. I'll never forget it. This is how people I work with still do it, and they're licensed engineers. Not a manager or employer, but I work in IT support and I've seen some things. Most notably, a girl came in and couldn't get a movie out of the disk drive on her laptop. She tried to pull it out using her nails, made her aware of the button on the side of the tray, and she hammered on it like her life depended on it. Nothing happened. No surprise to me, it wasn't on. So I suggested her that she do that. She complied, but asked if she could do it here in the shop, just in case. I literally rolled my eyes and let out such a heavy sigh reading this. I would have just told her that it's ruined forever and there's nothing you could do. Wow, a disk drive on a laptop. Why does that seem so ancient to me? I haven't heard of a disk drive on a laptop for years and years. That's actually crazy. You'd think that saying that a fried good comes in so many pieces per serving is foolproof. But that hasn't stopped a couple people from just shrugging and dumping bags full of product into the fryer when we really only need four cheese sticks. I'm a motion picture property master. A number of years ago, I called a colleague to see if he'd rent me a certain prop I knew he had in his inventory. He said, yeah, just go to the set tomorrow and get it. I have two new guys on this show and they're a little inexperienced, so you'll probably have to show them where it is in the prop truck. Inexperienced didn't cover the half of it. When I opened the prop truck door, one of his crew was using a rubber mallet to try to force 0.45 cal dummy bullets into the cylinder of a 0.38 cal revolver. God, that sounds like a cartoon. The equals sign. Otherwise known to this technician as that dash dash symbol. It wasn't a scenario where they suddenly forgot what it was called. This person simply had no idea how to enter that dash dash symbol on a keyboard. I've had delivery drivers who insisted upon leaving half of their orders at the store when going out to deliver them. As in, you have to drop off one pie and nothing else. And you still get to the house without it. Also, cutting pizzas. Some people just can't handle the geometry. Former pizza manager here. Can confirm, shapes are hard. An EpiPen. I used to be a pharmacy tech about six years ago. One of the girls I used to work with was a complete slob, and we hired her other slob friend. This is besides the point. Both were very artistic girls, but also very weird. One was a lead nationally certified farm tech. The other was just there because we needed help. We ended up calling them Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Sometimes we'll dispose of things for customers, expired meds or leftover medication. This woman brings in her kids expired EpiPens. EpiPens are designed to be used in an emergency. They're super easy and clearly labelled. They both go out back to retire the pens. This is not company policy, but my PIC, pharmacist in charge, didn't care because there's enough on her plate. Well, Tweedledum ended up holding the pen backwards. She shot the needle end right into her thumb. She ended up going to the hospital. Staff are no longer allowed to retire EpiPens. Tweedledee and Needle... Oh, no. I honestly hate to say it, but I think this would be me. If I was a pharmacist, right, and I'm, I'm, I really struggle with instructions, so anything like that would just go horribly wrong, which is why I'm not a pharmacist, so let's be grateful that I'm not your pharmacist, okay? Um, but yeah. I worked in a restaurant when I was in high school, and every night the cook on duty had to mop the back of the house before close. The new guy decided to be Mr. Overachiever and mopped the walk-in freezer as well. Our sewage pipe broke, so the back garden was soaking wet. This is in the US. So the guy came to fix it, poked around etc, then realised he'd parked his truck on the wet patch and it was now sinking in the mud. Took him two winches and three days to get it out. The kids played in it when he wasn't there. When we were getting ready to come home from Iraq, our battery commander gave this training about how we were going to be going home soon. And when we got there, it was important to remember that when people made us mad, that we couldn't just hit them anymore, but would have to think things through and use words to solve our problems instead. Because it's the army, he went into more detail than most people would think is necessary. And most of us were getting kind of restless by the time the training finished up. Finally, he wraps it up and is like, OK, does anyone have any questions? One of the more special soldiers sticks his hand up. Uh, sir, I have a question. If I'm in a club and some guy grabs my wife's butt, I'm going to beat his butt. Battery commander, that isn't even really a question. The lady I work with in banking found an article in the news online that was relevant in our industry 
about debit card fraud or something. So she wanted to share with all of the staff and rather than emailing the link, she printed it out and scanned it to everyone. I have a co-worker. She inputs data in Excel, prints out and faxes. I just want the data I can copy and paste with. And she prints out Excel file, scans and saves as PDF. I work at a fast casual concept restaurant as a manager. We have cut resistant gloves for using knives because we don't exactly hire culinary trained individuals. I've sliced my hand open three different times on the stainless steel splash guards on the hand washing sinks. Everyone kept asking why I wasn't wearing a cut glove. Maybe you should file slash sand down the sharp edge on your splash guard. Well, we used to allow rock wall attendants to climb solo at our recreation centre rock wall until one young female attendant, let's call her Claire, climbed to the top without being hooked to the automatic belay and pushed off the top to come down, falling 30 feet to the ground. She states she thought she was hooked in. I bet that hurt. Whoa, 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 just reverse that there quickly for me. How was she alive? Surely she would have just died. Because imagine, right, she's falling from height. And she wouldn't be tensed up or anything. Her body would just crash and hit the floor. Poor woman. Do I have to be an employee to tell a story? In between college and high school, I worked fast food. The manager's office had a safe. You know the kind. You put money in the top flap and it falls into the safe in the bottom. One night, the manager pulls me off the register and takes me into the back office. He points at the safe and asks me to fix it. I look down and there's a giant bottle brush stuck in it. Pulling on it didn't work. I had to actually push it in, turn, and then pull it out. Apparently, when the manager had been dropping money into the safe, it didn't drop all the way in. The bottle brush was the obvious solution. Other side of this story. This one time, I was working to steal money from the McDonald's I work at to buy smack. When the brush I was using got stuck, I started to panic. Then I realised I could just get one of the idiots who worked the register to pull it out. And if anyone came along, I could act like I caught them. I work in IT, and recently I had to deal with an errand from input. Please enter your age. Your age is a single value between 16 and 125. So far we've had 67 years old, 80 years young. 1989, 12th 06, 06 12th 1989, 06 12th 89, and I am 35. Ah. I always thought it was pretty clear that if something caught on fire and wasn't supposed to be on fire, you put the fire out. I was working the front desk at a dog kennel one day when an employee nonchalantly walks up front and goes, is the ice cream machine supposed to be on fire? Supposed to be on fire. I don't even know how he tied his own shoes every morning. It was slow one day, and we were in between custodians, so I had an employee assist me with cleaning the restrooms. I picked it random from the volunteers because all of our employees are idiots, so it didn't matter much, and I struck gold with my choice. She stared at me like a dead fish while I told her that we would wipe down the mirrors and sinks, scrub the toilets, collect the trash, and mop. When I was done going over the very simple, very basic task list, she nodded and replied with, Okay, I'll mop, before going off to get the mopping supplies. There were five or so toilets, and I was about halfway through scrubbing them when I finished the one I was working on and turned to leave the stool, only to see that the floor outside was wet. I opened the door to see that not only had the stupid mofo mopped me into the stool, but she'd started mopping the door and was currently mopping herself into the back corner of the restroom. And her mopping technique consisted of slinging some water down, moving the mop a little bit, and backing up to do it again. She didn't assist with anything other than mopping. Well, guys, I mean, these simple and easy tasks may be simple to you, but to someone else, it could be quite a challenge. And you should understand that and guide her, you know? Just saying, I'd be the best manager. Feel free to hire me. The touchscreen point of sale system. It worked so much better than handwritten tickets until a co-worker, we'll call her Dumbum, not her real name, came in with pink eye and gave half the staff her fricking infection. Such a better system. So quickly ruined. I blame this on ridiculous sick time policies a lot of employers have. I work at Whole Foods Produce Department. Me and another long-time employee were training a new guy. The store's about to open, so we tell him to sweep up some produce trimmings on the floor. We hand him the broom and proceed to watch him attempt to sweep up some lettuce leaves. He, like, kept his elbow tucked to his side forearms straight out and just rotated his rotator cuff and spun around instead of sweeping like a normal human being. We watched this with looks of pure confusion for about five minutes until my co-worker steps in and sweeps up the lettuce leaves in about 10 seconds. 
This guy was in his late 20s and attempting to get into grad school and couldn't use a broom. He didn't last long. That's actually what my partner's dad says to him as an insult. He goes, you can't even use a sweeping brush. So yeah, that's kind of the same thing really, isn't it? While working as an IT supporter a couple of years back, lady, hey, my monitor doesn't work. Me, sorry for the silly question, but is it switched on? Do you see the power light? Lady, of course it's switched on. Me, can you try switching it off? Lady, oh, thanks. Oh, I've got this one. Ready? No, you aren't. A water bottle. Yep. A freaking water bottle blew this guy's mind, and I saw it happen. We give out free water bottles where I work to help stay hydrated. Dude comes up and says it's broken. What the frick? Is it leaking? No. Does it exist? Yes. Then how can it be freaking broken? Well, these are the types of water bottles that have the built-in straw that goes from the lid to the bottom, as straws do. Well, this guy comes up and asks for a new one because it's broken. And so since he has it with him and I can't see anything obviously wrong with it, I logically ask what is wrong with it. Tells me he can't drink from it and that it's not working. Okay, fine. I'm racking my brain to understand what could be wrong. I see the bottle was maybe half full, so at a loss, I ask him to demonstrate so I can see how it's broken. Guy flips up the mouthpiece on the lid. Good. Yes, good. Guy puts his mouth on said mouthpiece. Yes, all systems go. No issues so far. Guy tilts his head back and quickly tilts the bottom of the bottle straight into the air, like he's the star of a mother fricking Gatorade commercial with orange forehead sweat. And now no water is at the base of the straw. Because of gravity. Ding, 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 ding. I had to explain how suction works, seriously, and that replacing it would not fix the issue. That day, a little bit of me died inside. That's really, really dumb. But to be fair, so's trying to redesign the bottle. It's a plastic tube open at one end so you can drink out of it. Sarah. Freaking Sarah. The work I do looks like it's data entry. But there are a lot of validations that we have to do that make it a little more complicated. Unfortunately, for a long time, new managers would see data entry and give me the bottom of the intelligence barrel people. One in particular is a woman named Sarah. Sarah is a nice enough person when you talk to her. At the time, she was in her late 20s, seemed reasonably intelligent. She just couldn't get the job right. No matter how many times I explained it and went over the different processes, she just couldn't do it on her own. Okay, well, I needed some filing done anyway. I give her a stack of completed purchase orders to file. If the company doesn't have a folder, make a new one. Alphabetical order. If it's the Home Depot, it goes under T for the. I expected some questions, of course, and I got them. I let her do this for a couple of days before she went off to do something else for another department. Then I needed to pull a purchase order. I can't remember the name of the company or anything right now. This was about 10 years ago. But let's say it was Customer Inc. I go to the C's. Hmm, not there. Maybe she thought it was a different name. After going through thousands of files, I found a group of C's after the I's. That wasn't the only thing either. I had to have the entire file system reorganized. She didn't know the alphabet. How do you get into your late 20s and not know alphabetical order? She still works for us too. She's been fired a few times but keeps coming back. I think she's related to someone of importance. At least she's not given much responsibility. Okay, yeah, that's very questionable. How do you not know the alphabet in your 20s? That is very worrying. Um, We should probably have a word with this lady. Sarah, if you're watching, comment. Any therapists around? Because if you see Sarah comment, give her a DM and sort her out. We take orders from customers over the phone or email. The usual practice was for the order takers to take the order, print it and bring it to the order pickers. Well, one order taker would print the order but forget it at the printer the entire day and it would never end up getting filed. So I installed her very own printer at her desk so it would print right in front of her. From then on, she would continue to now forget the orders at her desk and never submit them to the order pickers. Okay. So now we relieved her entirely of that responsibility by having her print directly to the order picker's printer and have them check for new orders periodically. She then started typing up the orders on the computer and then neglecting to even print or save them at all. The only place it exists is on her desktop. I was absolutely floored. Everything we tried to do to make it easier for her, she ended up proving it useless. 
I used to work in a restaurant where we had this big machine that has the circular blade, which is sharp as frick, to make thin slices of meat or fingertips if you're not careful. Every evening after the kitchen closed, it was the duty of the cook working with the machine to clean it. The procedure was to set the blade to zero and wash it, and the rest of the machine with a sponge using water and soap. At one point, we had this guy called Michael who apparently forgot about cleaning it after getting drunk at the end of his shift. So he goes back and decides he would give it the best cleaning job in the world by dismantling the machine, which had protective metal covers everywhere, only leaving a small part of the blade exposed. While the machine being off, this guy presses the hard side of the sponge on the blade and flips the switch. Friction decided to take his hand and eat it. Although I, luckily, wasn't at work on this specific evening, I heard it was a pretty bloody scene with a bucket of ice and fingers involved. I loved the meat slicer we had at our old job. Tons of people there had stories about cutting themselves on it, losing fingertips, etc. I was the only one apparently capable of not cutting myself on it. Except when it was totally off and I was cleaning it. No moving blades, but tiny quick cuts on the knuckles when I barely brushed against the blade. I shared an admin who booked a flight for me. I asked her to forward me the confirmation email so I could forward it to my wife. She printed out the email, retyped it in Microsoft Word, and sent the Word file to me as an attachment. I found her doing this in the middle of typing the new document. But even when I explained what I needed and why, for the second time, she insisted on finishing what she started and didn't forward the email. I had to go back and stand next to her desk to make sure she forwarded the email. Oh love, you're just making more work for yourself. You're breaking your back. Just press forward, honey. Seems pretty idiot-proof to not attach a spreadsheet with every employee's social security number on it and send it to everyone in the company, but that didn't stop the woman in charge of our finances. A guy using the drive through register accidentally pressed the cash button, irreversible without the keys, and blamed it on a Christmas beetle that had been flying around. Not even joking. Everyone found it hilarious. It was more laughing at him than with him, though. I see you're from the Southern Hemisphere. Those beetles cause enough problems. I bet they totally did do it. Like a whole gang of them were hanging out around the corner daring each other to go push the cash button. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos coming daily.